Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar uh, from Elusive Networks. Uh, the webinar topic today is Defending Hybrid Cloud-Enabled Ecosystems, Stopping Attacker Movement. Um, my name is Jason Silverman from the product marketing team here at Elusive. I won't be presenting, but I'll just make a few preliminary announcements, and then I'll hand things over to Gil Shulman, our VP product. Um, Today's webinar is being recorded and everyone who has registered will receive a copy of the recording um, in the next day or two uh, in your email inbox, so keep an eye out for that. Um, secondly, uh, we will reserve time at the end of today's webinar for a Q&A. You can ask questions at any point during the webinar in the Q&A tab on the webinar control panel, which you should be able to see uh, either at the bottom or top of your screen. Um, so please, we do encourage you to ask questions um, and uh, we will answer as many as we can uh, during the course of the webinar. If we don't get to every question, we will try to get to your question uh, via email um, at a certain point over the next couple of days. So with all that said, oh, one more thing. I do hope that you and your family are safe and healthy during these times um, and uh, we hope that will continue. Um, with all that said, I'm going to turn things over now to Gil Shulman, our VP of Product at Elusive Networks. Gil, over to you. So thank you, and uh, I think it's good morning on your side of the world. Um, <clears throat> to, my name is Gil Shulman. I'm VP Product um, at Elusive. Um, as part of this series of webinars um, today, we are going to talk a little bit about um, cloud-enabled ecosystems. Um, problems that we see, um, solutions that we provide, um, and from there we're going to move through different types of use cases, uh, how we solve that, um, and everything that you probably need um, to know. And if we're not covering it here, as, uh, as Jason uh, mentioned in the, at the housekeeping uh, part of this presentation, of this session, uh, you can ask questions in the chat, in chat or you can just you know, email us with questions and we'll try and address that um, as soon as possible. So, you know, starting the, so starting the entire story, uh, when we're looking into cloud, there is a, a basic question of why cloud and to begin with. And since the, we are not a cloud provider, we're not going to get into that, but, you know, addressing security concerns or addressing concerns uh, to begin with, starts with understanding why we went there to begin with. And when we're looking at that list, um, this is the list that was created by Microsoft uh, for why people are moving into cloud. Um, but the first four are probably the most uh, prominent one for cost, sa cost saving, increasing business agility, scaling and meeting market demand, scaling and meeting geographic demand. And I'm not trying to sell you on cloud. I think we are all there uh, to, to, to some degree, but understanding that this is where we are going also means that this is what we need to be very conscious about in terms of integrating cloud environment or cloud attack surfaces um, into our on-prem environment. There is also um, a, a, a notion that cloud is safer, and cloud is safer, by the way, but when we're looking at what it, what it actually means and what, how we need to think about it, you know, all the AWSs and Azure and GCPs of the world, uh, they're responsible uh, for security of the cloud, securing the, the, the environment itself. While when we're looking at what we are responsible as a customer of clouds, um, as vendors that we, are trying, that we are offering solutions for that, it's everything that is in the cloud. So the um, identity management, different types of applications, platforms, all those different elements, we need to make sure that are working in concert in order to secure the environment. Now, when we're, I'm saying an environment, it's not just a cloud, it's securing your organization. Cloud is part of your organization, regardless if it's a service or not. And this is also what is uh, very clear when we're looking at different types of statistics and those numbers just are just getting worse, um, security is at the top by far. 91% um, of organizations are concerned about cloud security. And it's not 
um, because of just because of regulations or whatever it is. This is a very powerful technology that they that they are actively integrating, coming from the business in many cases. They need to keep up, but there is still a lot of concern on how to secure, but also a lot of questions of what to secure. So when we're talking with a lot of our customers, th there are some, or with uh, running different types of surveys, we're seeing that there are a lot of concerns, but not necessarily the visibility or a clear strategy on what is the holistic security challenges on what we need to secure. And when we're looking, diving even one step further into, into those numbers and into those questions, we're seeing that 42% um, of, so the, in, in terms of top threats um, is un, for unauthorized access. So talking about if I'm going to create an, 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 an analog uh, for the on-prem environment where we're concerned about phishing because this is the most prevalent threat to organization in terms of breaching the organization. Um, account takeover or unauthorized access is the, is the analog for that. There are also um, interfaces for APIs, misconfiguration of cloud platform. There are so many different elements that are of a concern but also I want to note that when you are looking at it, we're talking about one problem or one point in the, in the organization that might create and, must, must, uh, and, and will create new attack vectors um, to your organization. So what can actually happen in the cloud? So let's, let's work through that one by one. So the first thing is movement from corporate network to cloud environment. So imagine that today, um, not today, but in the past, we only had the on-prem. We might have had some hosting, but at the end of the day, this is your in controlled environment that is completely separated. Now, when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about what, what is possible for attackers, in order to get, because at the end of the day, they have um, a key objective, which is to get to um, your key assets, to your data, to whatever it is. If they manage through phishing or for whatever means to get into your organization, they can also move into the cloud environment if it's not secured properly. And we are going to touch on that in the, in later in the presentation as well. So what they're actually seeking, what they're trying to do um, is try is they are going to move into a, probably a DevOps privileged account, and then they're going to try and move um, into your cloud assets where you also have so much different types of information services and start moving laterally, not just inside the, inside the enterprise in order to get to the, key, to the asset that will allow them, to move into the cloud itself. The other part is movement from the cloud to on-prem assets. So now we created our hybrid or multi-cloud environments, connected them into, your, into our organization globally or locally. But now we also, like with phishing, we have a, a, one of the most prominent attacks, our attack, attack, attack takeover. And attack takeover can be accomplished in many, many ways. So they can, attackers, what we're seeing is performing attack, um, account takeover and getting into cloud assets and from the cloud, moving um, back into the on-prem environment. Now, this is something that usually is a little bit more easy um, to accomplish because you can do that from basically anywhere in the world. Um, what you need are the credentials. Now, another part is movement from cloud to cloud. So attacker is inside cloud A, it can be Azure, it can be AWS, it can be whatever it is, and they're going to move and try and get um, a foothold in, in all clouds or in, cl in the other cloud. The last one is movement between assets within the cloud so imagine that you have some kind of an application server, it can be Tomcat, whatever it is, um, it got breached, 
um, and the bridge actually give you the information. So let's say that we landed on the Tomcat. The Tomcat is connected to a database, um, but the Tomcat also have um, a bunch, just a second, it has a bunch of different connections and credentials and the attackers can leverage that in order to get to the database. Oh, sorry. To the database and from the database obviously get to data. So um, if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to stop for a second and answer them. Okay. So what we are doing is we actually are saying that um, we, we are stopping attack. We're talking, talking about movement from anywhere to anywhere. It's not, if you remember at the beginning, I said, okay, there are um, concerns here, here, and here uh, for attack, for account takeover, for uh, misconfiguration, and, and so on and so forth. But we're not looking at the problem as, 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 uh, as a singular element. What I mean by that is, we're not securing one tool. We're not securing one point in time because there are so many different vectors. We're looking at the organization as a single organism that you can move from anywhere to anywhere between endpoints, systems, devices, whatever you can imagine. And then from anywhere, either from the cloud or from the enterprise can move across all the different attack surfaces. And the statement that we're coming up with it's not just about securing one point. It's about securing the potential to get to your key assets, regardless if they're on, in cloud, on-prem, hosted, whatever it is. So how do we actually do something like that? So the first thing that we do is actually we, we support um, standalone decoys. This is something that we released at the beginning of the year. Um, so if you want to create now and place um, any decoy, full OS decoy with the application um, in your tenant, VPC, whatever it is, we can transform basically any application into a decoy by installing our standalone decoy agent. And then you have your Tomcats and you can create another Tomcat, you can create another database. And based on that, try um, and lure um, the attackers in order to get to that environment so you can study them. Now, another part, and this is um, in order to um, poison basically your environment in the cloud. The second element, uh, when we're looking at elusive, at, at what we do, is attackers are using a lot of cache connections and in order to get, to give them information on what is possible, what kind of services they have, um, what kind of services they have, uh, where they can get, is that an endpoint that can potentially give me access to something valuable for me as an attacker? So the, for one thing, Attack Surface Manager is our hygiene module um, that is basically stage one. It means that we're going to clean, identify, provide visibility, and clean um, all connections, um, credentials, identify the um, environment in which you have credentials, run it in our GraphDB, our pathway database, in order to identify all the different possible paths from any machine to any crown jewel or key asset. And what we are seeing here is an endpoint that has a bunch of different services, so Salesforce, G Suite, uh, Office 365, AWS, a bunch of them. Now, I can get as an attacker information from the, from the browser, so login, whatever it is, but if I'm a DevOps, I can also get information through the AWS CLI tool. So when I'm looking at what is possible, um, I, we can elusive ASM, one of the things that we're doing, we're exposing and offering you the ability to understand where where, one, where do I have connections to our SaaS services, to our cloud services? So that shouldn't be there. Another element is for that is understanding if there are some um, shadow, ser shadow services, shadow IT environment where someone is just, you know, saying, I don't care about policies, let's open, I need that service and just start connecting without validation. 
So there are a lot of different, it's easy to consume, but it's also easy to, uh, very difficult, but on the other hand, it's very difficult to control. So in order to do that, we need visibility and the ability to remediate very, very fast instead of just waiting for the next uh, consultancy um, audit where they're going to look into your environment and, and clean it up, but the day after that, it's, it's, it's polluted again. This is something that needs to, cut, to keep on coming and coming. Now, what we're looking at, what we're doing there is we first identify um, Crown Jewel, and then you can see here we're also providing Crown Jewel suggestions that uh, we automatically discover um, in your network. And, but here you can also add a bunch of different services um, that you think uh, that you want to monitor and identify across your environment. Now, a Crown Jewel, if you are in Europe or if you are in specific areas, you can also, um, because of GDPR compliance, you can set specific URLs um, and, and uh, make sure that you're covered and you have all the visibility and the controls that you need in order to understand um, the interactions with cloud assets and the risks that they offer you. Now, additional problem is uh, managing privileges and access to the organization's cloud resources and services. Now, why is it a problem to begin with? The problem is that we're, when we're looking at the cloud, we're seeing a lot of overlaps with the on-prem. So take an example for Microsoft Azure. You know, in many cases, you have things like, uh, you will have um, an, Azure, an Azure AD, you will have an on-prem AD. They're not necessarily always synchronized. Um, in many cases, you have shadow admins that are inheriting uh, privileges from upper hierarchies. Um, you have a bunch of bad practices. There, you, there are so many different elements when you're trying to connect, you know, historical infrastructure with a uh, business driven infrastructure that needs to, to hyperscale to provide the business services um, at a rate that you can't, that it's very difficult to control security. Uh, blind spots are created. So ASM is exactly the tool or the system um, that we offer in order to identify those things, but also give you um, a path to manage the risk and remediate all the different violations that you, you, that you deem as actually risky. So when we're looking at it, the first thing that you should notice here is that everything that we do is also comes with suggestions and some kind of an initial, an initial visibility into the state that your organization is currently at. So what are we actually seeing here? So if on the right left and the left hand side, you can see a bunch of different category, oh, sorry. You can see a bunch of different categories that we support from Azure to domain users, to crown jewels, to local shadows, suspicious files, a bunch of different elements. And the reasons that they're there is because attackers are living off the land with them. So they might get in, they might be able to, you know, to download their tools, but they are also looking for those bullets to load their tools. And we are eliminating all those bullets. We are taking the bullets, we're not eliminating the tools because the tools keeps on evolving, um, but they're still using bullets. So when we're looking here, what we see here is that before you even start, we identified 530 different violations found with 38 privileged identities. So we have violations across a bunch of different machines, but 38 unique identities. Now we are also giving you suggestions on how to improve them and so on. So once you're getting in into the, into the specific use case, and this is the Azure privileged identities, you can see that there is a bunch of data here that was created from rules that were suggested to you. So you can see here, where is my mouse? Here you can see here that we, are, we have discovered new rule suggestions for violation types, domain user credential and shadow admins. So the system continuously um, learn your the environment and suggests rules based on use cases and threats that we're seeing um, across customers, across um, research that we're doing, and we keep on suggesting rules on top of the things that you might, you might want to introduce. And as a result of that, 
we are getting a bunch of very extremely valuable data. So what are we actually seeing here? What are we exposing through this use case? So you probably noticed that, you know, um, we're talking in use cases. We're not talking about in, you know, this technology, we're not talking about, you know, a point problem. We're talking about what are we actually solving for you? So the first thing that you should note here is the, the summary, but also you can see here on the top, the boxes here, you can see the top use cases or the top insights that you can drive. Now we put there there because we do not want you to keep on going into tables, long, never ending tables. And you know, just you can if you want, but this is something that is too much data. You have a bunch of other things to do as well. So we want to simplify. So what we're doing is in each one of those boxes, what you can see is the use case and the most, and the most, um, and the top violating subscriptions or, or machines or whatever it is. So if you were to, 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 to take, you know, every day to, or every other day to choose where to invest, go to those boxes, forget the table and just deal with what we are recommending. Now those use cases goes to top privileged users. So for example, a user that might be disabled on-prem, but they are synchronized and they, have, they are a contributor on Azure. So now an attacker, um, this, machine, this user on, on, you know, inside the organization might you know, be low risk, but if an attacker gets their hands on it, um, they might be able to compromise your cloud environment. So we're, we keep on looking at the blind spots or the differences between what is on-prem, what is cloud, and the combined risks that are involved. The second one is top violating users without MFA. And you can see, it, oh, this one is actually hiding it, but you can see it in the table, every user that we are going to tell you about, in, here it's Itai Abraham, um, when we're looking at him, we can see that it, it's 7% of all violations are involved with the tie, with the tie user. But the one, the one, one more thing that we can learn about them, it's not just 7% of the violations that are as a source of that user. This user is also doesn't work with MFA, with Azure MFA. So what you will see, if you are going to, to click on the tie here, the, the table will filter and you will be able to see all the violation related to, that, to the tie but you're also going to see in which, which users do not have, what are the, is their role, but also um, if they have MFA enabled. And based on those kind of risks, you can continuously tighten that, uh, the security ring that you have on the organization and keep on improving that because we are exposing those kind of violations. So if I'm going to go back to a point problem, you might say, yes, but I have MFA but the blind spots say you have MFA, but you are not enabling that on, on the most important users um, that needs that. Now, top privileged applications um, goes to applications with the, most, with the most privileges assigned to them. Top violating assigned rule or roles, um, the same. Owner, we can see how many of the, the violations relate to owner kind of roles or contributor or whatever role that you're, that you're um, assigning. So we keep on providing more insights and visibility into your cloud, cloud environment, but not just that, how it connects with the on-prem. So you can make sure that it's not just that cloud is secure, but the combination of on-prem and cloud is are secure. So if I'm going to summarize that, we can see up here, you know, the number of violations, you can see here privilege, how many privileged users have violation, privileged application has violation, so you can track uh, progress. When we're moving to the top table here, you don't, if you don't have the time, and I know that you probably do not have to go through another set of tables, all you need to do is to look at the summaries and understand what are the, the, the most urgent elements that needs to be uh, to be addressed in order to reduce the risk. You can see uh, uh, here the top violations if you're going to um, expand that. 
And obviously you have a bunch of data in here um, that you can quickly understand um, the user, the, t the identity type, what kind of role, so you can also understand what kind of damage they might offer, they might create, uh, what kind of services this kind of, this kind of user have, uh, it's a subscription or not, uh, MFA, yes or not, and so on and so on. So the problem that we are looking with Attack Surface Manager, cloud privileged users are not necessarily admins on top of on-prem domains, therefore their implication on attack surface remain invisible. So it's about visibility here. We need to understand users are no longer, uh, are no longer restricted to the on-prem environment. Um, they can connect directly from the cloud. They can directly connect from anywhere to the cloud without VPN. They can move from cloud to the, to the on-prem. And there are so many increased in, increase ve uh, attack vectors that keeping track on the, on the relationship between the different environment becomes critical. So what we're doing with ASM, um, new cloud based rules in domain, user credentials, shadow admins in order to discover and eliminate stored credentials of cloud privileged users. And this is how we demonstrated earlier when we talked about um, when we talked about getting visibility to each one of the endpoints and the understanding not what is the specific endpoint can do, but also what are the paths that an attacker can actually take by using all those different blind spots. So with the addition of things like pathways, you have a continuous red team that is looking at based on the information that is currently available and inside your organization, how an attacker will move from the cloud inside the organization, from inside the organization to the cloud, and every other permutation that you can imagine. So let's, let's take an, uh, an example. We have here bhorn at acme.com. Um, we have an attacker. The attacker managed to breach uh, bhorn, and it's actually Bob Horn, um, harvesting credentials or shadow or a shadowed credential and through that they can actually move directly to the cloud now so what we need to do here is we need uh, the domain we need to either eliminate or minimize the domain users um, we need to eliminate shadow admins so all those kind of things we need to quickly identify and 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 remove from the network so we can be uh, it can be tighter now, how can, but how can you actually do that instead of getting, you know, without getting into very long-term projects and start analyzing the different ADs, we provide you that, that visibility. So if we are moving from the Azure privileged identity, you can see that, you know, you can ask about, show me all the high privileged domain users. And by doing that, we are not just saying, Okay, this compu host name, computer24 elusive ng, and that host and that username has a saved RDP credential, which is bad enough. We are also telling you that that user has credentials and access to Azure. So you understand that that is not just a problem for you on prem. This is also a problem for you when, when we're talking about um, the cloud environment itself. So now we have the on prem environment. Um, attack, the, the, the attacker gets the credential uh, from the on-prem on user, and now they also have, through that, internet-facing access. So they do not need to move from the on-prem machine to anywhere else. They can just move, they can just collect it, go home, use another machine, I don't know, um, and, and access it from anywhere they want. They do not need um, the foothold, they do not need persistency inside the on-prem environment in order to compromise the cloud once they, uh, once they manage to, to collect that information. Now, that is key for you to remember. Up until now, when we all always talked about on-prem, we talked about that attacker needs persistency. So they're adding different variables into, um, into, um, into the registry hives, 
they're doing a bunch of different, using a bunch of different techniques that, you know, they might work, but it also gives the, um, the, the, you as defenders the opportunity to identify them and kick them out, preventing them the ability to actually do something about um, the harvested credentials. Now, in this case, unauthorized access, misconfigured servers, insecure interfaces, API, connect, account hijacking, they can do anything from anywhere because now they have the credentials and they can make a choice. Um, when, so up until now, we talked about hygiene. We talked about um, how we can eliminate all the different um, elements that attackers will be looking for once they land inside your organizations or in the cloud in order to move around and in order to get to their key assets or to their attack objectives, which can be anything from data to damage to whatever you can imagine based on your organization profile. Now, so we cleaned the environment and we shrunk and we managed to shrunk, to shrink, um, we managed to shrink the attack surface or deflate the attack surface to a minimum but now for attack detection system, our deception capabilities, we are inflating it again. So we can use, we are, so we introduce and we can use existing deceptions. So RDP and SSH and a bunch of different protocols for server to server communications. So we're talking about in cloud lateral movement. Um, and, uh, and we can also use uh, a bunch of deceptive hosts or applications um, in order to um, deceive the attacker. So when we're looking at the environment uh, and, uh, and what we want to do with attack detection system or our deceptions, as you can see here, we're, we're highlighting Microsoft IS, we're highlighting Tomcat, we're highlighting Jenkins, that is extremely important um, uh, both for, you know, to manage the environment, but also for attackers, because you know the Jenkins itself has a couple of just a couple of files uh, for the servers that it manages, the credentials that it holds in order to access them. So it's a, it's a gold mine for attackers. So when we're looking at what we need to do or what an attacker does, uh, compromise. The first thing that they are trying to do is compromise um, the web app or the CIS, or CICD server. From there, they're going to try, they're going to try and get, um, they're, if they're, they're going to be using a deceptive configuration file. And this deceptive configuration file will also have um, the deceptive di database credentials and connections. So they will go there, they're going to figure out, okay, now they're using Postgres, or they're using MySQL, whatever it is, um, on the Tomcat, and this is something that we plant, deceptive hosts, we are planting um, deceptive connections, so that for different databases, everything to prevent in-cloud lateral movement. So now when they're trying to move to this deceptive uh, database, um, they're going to be, oh, sorry, they're going to be sent to our trap server, um, or to a decoy, whatever you, you choose to deploy, uh, and based on that, um, just um, eliminate the, uh, detect them and eliminate them and, and remove them from um, the cloud altogether. So um, this, is a, this is the end of this short presentation. I'm going to give uh, Jason now um, back the, um, the microphone, um, and I'm going to summarize after that. Sure, sure. Um, and so thank you, Gil, for that presentation. Uh, this is the time period that we've reserved for questions uh, from the audience. I know a couple came in already. Um, but just as a reminder, you can ask questions in the Q&A tab on the webinar control panel. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll take a few minutes now to answer a few of them. Before we do that, just um, you can see on the screen, and I'll go through a few options that you can kind of further engage with us and find out more about Elusive's uh, cloud capabilities or about our capabilities of, of the platform in general. Um, the number one way is you can request a demo, an in-product demo uh, at elusivenetworks.com slash demo. Um, one of our security experts can 
show you kind of the ins and outs of a tax service manager, a tax protection system, our forensics on demand capabilities, and much more. Um, we also, all of our webinars and other white papers and other and case studies and other content we publish is on our resources page at the link on the screen. Uh, you can also see our, read our blog at elusivenetworks.com slash blog. We write a lot about cybersecurity issues in general and about cloud specifically at times. Um, and as well as you can follow us on social. Just so we'll uh, go with a couple of questions right now off the bat. And again, if, if people have more questions, feel free to ask. Um, someone asked, Gil, of some of the, the issues that you mentioned about Azure, are they also applicable to other cloud platforms like AWS? That's a great question. So, <coughs> well, some, some of the issues are applicable to AWS. One of the things that we see as part of our research that AWS has a slew of different problem of their own. Um, that because of the, the way that they structured identities, the way that they're structuring um, the, the directory services, um, a bunch of different problems that are unique to AWS, even though they share some uh, threat characteristics. Um, nevertheless, the way that we're going, that the way that we're dealing with AWS is through, is, is extremely, uh, is very similar in the way, in terms of strategy. And what I mean by that, you know, make sure that you have full visibility across the different blind spots, both on-prem and cloud and the, connect and, the, and the combination of the two. Eliminate those unnecessary violations to and only keep things that are meaningful and important for the business to operate. Make, it, make sure that it's, you know, it's, it, you created this, um, this flow that it, 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 the, the, those actions happen continuously. You can automate them. You can automate cleanup as well if you need. And then after you deflated the dark surface, you inflate it with deceptions. And those things are also very, th those th deceptions are completely similar when it comes to AWS and um, Azure or even GCP. So the strategy itself, clean it up, deflate, inflate, but also make sure that you have the full visibility of how the, 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 the infrastructure of the cloud affects the on-prem and how the on-prem affects the cloud um, and the combined risk um, that you need to prioritize um, and take care of. Okay, great. We had a question also um, that is asking when, Talking to elusive customers, how serious have they said that the blind spots that you've described, um, uh, how serious are those um, in, in their experience? Yeah, so, you know, when we're looking at, at, at cloud to begin with, um, there are a lot of different things that needs to be secure. You know, access, um, access how to manage it, who has uh, identities and so on. One thing that we keep on seeing consistently across all organization is the lack of visibility into those blind spots. Because, we are run, because those organizations are running really, really quickly, they are forgetting about the relationship between the on-prem environment and the cloud environment. But, and they're saying them not as islands or separate islands, but it's, 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 those are the things, those blind spots are getting lost in the narrative, and what I mean by that, I'm going to put Cosby for one thing, but you know, and then I'm, I'm, my cloud is secure. I'm going to put in whatever misconfiguration tool like DOM9 or whatever it is, but it, it solves one problem. It doesn't look at the effect of, of how, the, you know, the, the major expansion of the organization infrastructure, it, and, it, it, and it is a major expansion of the infrastructure of the organization affect the on-prem, how it affects users. So when we're talking about it with different kinds, with CISOs, with DevOps, um, this is one of the things that they are reacting very, very positively to and saying, yes, this is a major problem for us. Um, this is a major problem for us. And in many cases, we do not have the tools um, to bridge that gap. We have tools for specific missions. 
or systems for specific missions, but nothing to give me the, the, the combined risk, the combined problem of adding additional infrastructure um, into my organization. Great. Um, one more question I see for now, um, but people again can still ask if you have more. Um, somebody asked, just when looking at like the complexity of, um, of cloud ecosystems, would um, they have to purchase multiple elusive systems for different cloud providers? Um, yeah, uh, that's the question. Yeah, so, so the answer for that is absolutely not. And the reason that I'm using absolutely not is because it's, it's part of our you know, belief system. And I started by even you know, by saying that at the beginning of the session, attack surface is an expansion of your organization. So the fact that it's cloud, it doesn't mean that you need to buy a new module. Those are additional endpoints that connect into your environment and we are looking at it as such. So securing your environment is not securing your on-prem, it's securing your organization. So if, you, if we need to help you with securing and identifying those blind spots or use what you already have to expand to the cloud, you don't need to pay us for that. This is part of what we believe we need to do for you. Um, so no, it's not a different, it's not a different license, um, you know, outside of the, the, the ASM itself, which is separate from deceptions, but there is no license for cloud or a separate model. Add as many cloud vendors as you want. It's at the set at, at its core. It's just, you know, another endpoint. Okay, great. Do you want to do the summary? Sure. So I, I, this is what I want you to remember, you know, in terms of cloud deployment, we don't care. You can put it wherever you want, private, public cloud, whatever it is, whatever vendor put it in. Attack surface management, um, attack surface reduction uh, for SaaS and infrastructure as service apps and, and, and whatever you can imagine. This is key. Giving you, this is key for cloud um, more than ever. Um, and it comes with cloud privileged identities discovery and, and, and a bunch of different technologies that we deliver and we keep on delivering. So keep, you know, uh, keep, uh, um, keep your ears to the ground because we are coming up strong with a bunch of, of, of technologies uh, that we've been developing for a while. A lot of them is already released, so you can play with them today. Um, and a bunch of them are going to be released um, through the end of the year um, and obviously uh, through next year. But the, at its core, it's understanding what is possible based on you know, configurations, based on identities, based on credentials that are spread around and getting that kind of visibility and the power to do something about it, not just know about it. Um, because at the end of the day, if you only know about it, at the end, of, at some point, you're, it's going to be normalized and it's going to be, to, to be, yeah, I might, you know, this is a risk that we want to ignore. Um, so we need to deflate, this is a must we need to deflate the attack surface across all the different environments so we can plant those decoys and deceptions so you will have um, the deterministic de detections. So what you are going to, so deterministic detection, um, so you can understand and know. So when you hear from Elusive, you need to actually run and jump through all the different uh, tiers on procedures because um, it's probably something that you should pay attention to. So if I'm looking at it, deployment anywhere, attack surface, deflate the, the attack surfaces, um, either cloud or on-prem and the combination of the two. And then you're putting in decoys and deceptions in order to inflate it, making it impossible for people to actually move around um, or use um, servers like Jenkins in order to harvest credentials and information um, that they nobody should actually have access to other than you know the people that are responsible for it so that is elusive cloud for now uh, a lot of the, a lot of goodies are coming uh, on top of that all right we do have one, yeah we have one more question that came in 
um, that I'll uh, ask you now. Um, if deploying full OS-based deceptions, in other words, honeypots, in a cloud yeah. system, is there a need to deploy additional trap or management servers in the cloud environment as well? No. As long as you have connectivity to the management or to the uh, to, to the trap, you don't need anything. Uh, you don't need anything. It, not to the trap. To the uh, the decoy itself will provide the data. As long as the decoy has access to the management, you don't need anything else. Okay, great. Okay, this has been really um, good. Hopefully, the audience found it informative. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, the webinar has been recorded, and you'll receive a copy of the recording in your inbox. Um, likely by tomorrow um, at some point. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks to our presenter today, Gil Shulman, um, the VP of Product at Elusive Networks. Um, hopefully everybody uh, found this informative and we wish you continued uh, health moving forward. Um, if you have any questions, you can always contact us at Elusive and request a demo as well. Thanks everyone. Have a good rest of the day, wherever you might be. Thank you, everyone.